Here's a good analogy is what I would say is if you look at the industrial revolution, we went from basically having shovels and plows that were pulled by horses and people would push and other things and to basically you have combines now and, and machines that dig. If you really think of it, it's so freaking similar to what happened with the white collar world today. There's so many manual tasks that you need to do mentally. Whereas now we're shifting to a new frontier where effectively you'll be able to identify the outcome just like you wanted with the machine and it'll be done for you. And so that's where I think we are going. And that's why it's like super exciting because it's going to change everything with what's mm -hmm. possible, not just today, but over the next foreseeable future. Welcome to Super Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Shahid Durrani. Today we have with us Ryan Staley. Ryan is the founder and CEO of Whale Boss, where he helps technology founders grow from 1 million to 30 million through the principles he's used to achieve the same results personally. Ryan has taught over 800 CROs, VPs, and leaders his proprietary enterprise sales. How are you, my friend? Good. I got to update that bio, man. I'm working with $300 million companies now. I don't know what the, the one to wow. 30. Wow. Well, it's good you know, that you I, corrected that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The other thing, too, is I've, I've been like obsessed with AI and integrating that into business. And so that's the other thing I'm, I'm focused on is really helping companies deploy AI systems, or I should say, into their people. So uh, is the 300 million jump ba because of AI? There's a, I've worked with larger companies. I've worked with $100 million plus companies, 300 million. And so it's, that's actually what's actually getting a lot of people's attention is because of some of the AI stuff I'm doing. So can you share the experience you had going from nothing to a million? Yeah, man. So this is when, so what that zero to 30 was taken from was effectively I had to it was all born out of failure, if if we could be completely transparent or if yeah. I could be completely transparent on it. Yeah. And one of the situations was at the time, I was in my first, I, I was in leadership positions before, but this was one where I was effectively tasked to turn around an underperforming office. There's a lot of struggles there. We didn't have a lot of infrastructure in place or any infrastructure. And so when I took that on, I basically turned around the sales team and However, the founder that I worked for and the CEO I worked for had really high expectations, right? So it was like, you don't have any resources, go make it happen. We'll pay you a lot of money type thing, right? It was like one of those. Mm -hmm. And so the cool thing was I, I was able to figure it out. However, I was working like 70 hours a week and every single bit of my mind share outside of work was focused on just recovering because I, I was always focused on work no matter what. So what happened was I actually got, and, and let me take a step back. One of the things too that encompassed that is as a result of that, I was not fun to be around. I was pretty crabby, right? I was crabby because I felt burnt out and I was toast and I felt like I had no life outside of work. And so one of the things that happened was that my team got really frustrated working for me and I was caught in the middle because I was pressing them really hard to get results because I was getting pressed, but I didn't have mm -hmm. whole life balance. And so one of the things they said is like, hey, we need you to start over and we're going to take your team away from you and you got to start from scratch. However, you're really good at these enterprise deals. And so what I did from there is built out that enterprise team and then scale, scaled it from zero to 30 million in ARR. And we had did that five and a half years with only four salespeople. So the mm. zero to one thing, what was really interesting with that is we started off as almost like a balanced portfolio with the opportunities we were targeting. So we would focus on a portion that was mid-market, and then we had a certain portion that was larger opportunities and we kept scaling up. And so that was one of the effective things that enabled me to gain the trust of my old team back because I had them basically only part of their focus on the enterprise team, as well as building up a new team. So then it shifted from People were frustrated working with me to the point where everyone wanted to work with me because they saw what was possible once we started getting these big deals. Mm, awesome, Ryan.
Can you share how AI has helped you recently to create a jump in your numbers and overall processes to have more free time? Yeah. So, and here's the thing. I've always been asked to do more with less. Pretty much every stage mm -hmm. of my career, I've never worked mm -hmm. for a VC back company where they're just like, here's a ton of money, use all these resources, make it happen. I was always in a resource constrained environment. And so one of the things that happened is I left and started my own company about three and a half years ago where I help basically tech companies deploy the systems, the sales systems that I use to scale there. And I have a podcast called The Scale Up Show where I interview tech founders and I also share AI insights. This was about 13, 14 months ago. So this was in like October, November of 23 or 22, I should say. And basically one of the founders, his name was Chris Savage, the CEO of Wistia. He's, hey, have you ever heard of Dolly before? And I'm like, no, I haven't. And basically it's the, it was the image generation. This was like the early generation that wasn't so good that OpenAI had and used it that weekend with my daughter. And then it was like, oh, this is cool. But from there I got put on OpenAI's wait list, if you will. And then from that wait list, I started using ChatGPT as soon as it came out. I tested it with what I knew to be true through 10,000 hours of experience. And the thing that scared the living hell out of me, but excited me at the same time, was I got 95% of that 10,000 hours of experience in terms of the wisdom with one of the questions I asked, literally with one single question. Okay. Mm. And so from that point, I was like, wow, this is going to change everything. And I was like, I was pretty upset initially, but I'm like, all right, there's two, two actions I could take towards this. I could either duck my head in the sand and get run over by this, or I could run towards it and then help other people accelerate themselves at a superhuman level. So that was like the origin story behind it. How the how behind it is like 2023 was the year of companies implementing AI into their product. Now I think 2024 is going to be the year of companies implementing AI into their people. Because effectively, if you look at some of the studies, they could do 200% of the output by doing that. And, and so that's where I think there's really big opportunities to be gained. Can you give us a, an example? Sure. Sure. Kind of the way that I look at it is there's five main buckets that you could use when it comes to this. And there's more, don't get me wrong, but these are five that when I look at it, it really jumps off the charts to me. So if you're looking at how to leverage AI and specifically your day-to-day -day function, and I particularly work with revenue org, so that's sales and marketing. The areas that I would look at are time. What are the, the elements that you spend a lot of time on? And that could be multiple tasks throughout the week that you spend 25, 30 minutes on. And if you effectively have the right prompt, you could do it in two minutes, right? So there's a lot of those death by a thousand paper cuts tasks that are repeated that are small. So for sales, that example would be account research and meeting preparation. There's a lot of that. So what I've done is engineered a, a prompt that effectively you could type in one word, have the prompt populate and give you all the data and research you need. So that's a good example of time. You could also do it for deep work where there's longer projects and you can do eight hours of work in 20 minutes. That's another example. If we look at execution, those are opportunities that typically you would outsource. That could be video editing. That could be other areas mm -hmm. where you leverage a $30 tool that would take $600 in the past to do. That's another one. Acumen is what I talked about in the beginning. That question that scared me is I effectively asked ChatGPT and OpenAI how to deconstruct how C-level executives made decisions, the KPIs they were evaluated on, the problems they faced when hitting those, and then the emotions they had as a result of that. So that's on the acumen side. When you look at K, Teeks, that is knowledge. So knowledge can be anything from rapidly scaling or consolidating a podcast, a book, a YouTube episode, right? Or knowledge could also be longer details, like how to integrate strategy into what you're doing and leveraging the mind of Elon Musk or Steve Jobs based on their patterns and then getting their advice customized to what you want. And then the last but not least is skills, right? You can either augment your skills or give yourself new skills instantly. And examples of giving yourself new skills instantly is, for example, Shahid, I suck at graphics, right? I am terrible at graphics. I am not good at that at all. But now I figured out literally in 15 minutes how to create a masterpiece work of art, visually stimulating pictures 
within mid journey or within Dolly just by understanding how to use the tool. And that was something that probably would have taken me three days to learn in the past. So those are all examples in terms of mm. how you look at all these different areas. No, oh, wonderful. How do you deal with the fact that chat GPT, for example, is updated up to 2022 with all of the changes that are happening in the world so quickly, especially with technology, if the information that you're looking for is up to 2022 and you may need something more recent, is there something that you, you work with on that point? They use, they updated that a while back. So now it's current. So it, it gives you up real to time. date. Yeah. Yeah. It gives you, it's real time up to date information. When did this happen? I completely missed that. Wow, that's big news. They enabled browsing maybe four months ago. And they, at that open AI dev day, that was maybe in late October, early November, they identified Amazing. like multi real time. Out. Yeah. Here's wow. what I would say too is there's, it's not just chat GPT, although that's the model I predominantly use. Although I, there's really good business use cases for that because Teams release. So basically, it, and this is really important, it identifies that it's not going to train on your data. That's one of the requirements in their security. And basically, instead of paying $20 a month, you pay $30 a month and have to have a minimum of two licenses. So that's worth it, in my opinion. But also, there's other large language models that have really good use cases like Google Bard has a good one that has Gemini running in the background. There's also Claude, which is owned by Anthropic, which is really good at consolidating dense documents. And then perplexity is really good. If you haven't used perplexity for real-time research because it works really fast and it cites all the resources that it pulls up. So those are just a couple other examples of language models that work really well. And now I'm starting to also dive into other areas like agents, which are automated, basically AIs. And then at the same time, there's other capabilities that are, are popping up every day. Yeah. It's exciting though, you know, where this is going. I just feel like it's going to streamline things in a big way, especially for entrepreneurs, it's going to make things easier. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, it's already doing it, man. Like mm -hmm. the things and capabilities that I have and my team has because of this are game changing, right? I think why it's so exciting for me, for someone like me, is because A, I see that Here's a good analogy is what I would say is if you look at the industrial revolution, we went from basically having shovels and plows that were pulled by horses and people would push and other things and to basically you have combines now and, and machines that dig. If you really think of it, it's so freaking similar to what happened with the white collar world today and where basically we got all these tools, but we had so many tools. There's so many manual tasks that you need to do mentally. Whereas now we're shifting to a new frontier where effectively you'll be able to identify the outcome just like you wanted with the machine and it'll be done for you. And so that's where I think we are and where we're going. And that's why it's like super exciting because it's going to change everything with what's mm -hmm. possible, not just today, but over the next you know, foreseeable future. So if you were to launch a startup integrating machine learning and artificial intelligence, what would your eyes be on? What kind of problem would you look to fix? Yeah, I, I think that's a really great question. I think here's what I would say. At its simplest, it's all, there's the intersection of a couple of things. And the first, what I would say is really around what do you have deep domain expertise around? Because what's happening is these large language models are democratizing general knowledge because it's effectively taking everything that has been put on the internet and then consolidating it and then customizing to what you need. So where the value is going to be derived is from people that have deep domain expertise in certain areas and then identify the problem within that domain expertise with that area that's startup thing because mm. like you just go yeah. for a general problem yeah you could do that here's the other thing that's happened shahid is like the cost to create software is starting to go down dramatically right mm -hmm. gpt stores was just released last week as of time of this recording and effectively people could create their own micro apps just by general language just by typing sentences in the past that would have taken like five ten thousand dollars to create oh. so what's going like to happen MVP. Is, yeah, 
And what's going to happen is there's going to be a flood of products on the market. Yeah. And the most important thing necessarily isn't just can you solve the problem and do you have domain expertise? But the third like leg to the stool is distribution, right? Do you have a method to grow your reoccurring revenue if you're looking at software or grow revenue consistently in a repeatable, scalable model? And, and that's what most people miss, I think, because you can have the best idea in the world, you can have the best solution in the world, but nobody knows about it. You're screaming in an abandoned building. And that just, that doesn't equal anything. So when you do go into a company and you're looking to do a lot more with a lot less, for example, what are your key initial steps that you take? Do you look at the leadership of the company or do you go directly into the sales and marketing? I guess that's your specialty sales and marketing, but do you still look at the leadership? Yeah. So what I would say is I stick to my lane, right? So I don't evaluate mm -hmm. all the non-core revenue okay. goals. I have a very deep well based on all my experience on this side. So what I do is I look at, there's key metrics you can look at that are very telling on where the holes are. And then once I see where the biggest challenges are, right, where if we fix those, they would yield the biggest result, like the biggest leverage points. And those are the areas that I focus on. And then I have different mm -hmm. systems that I've seen work repeatedly and multiple different situations based on just patterns of growth that companies have and where they're at. So for example, one of them could be a pipeline. I don't have enough opportunities. And so there's strategies around those. Others could be like, hey, we want to move up market, right? We want to start getting bigger customers. And there's a big, massive difference of how you treat an opportunity if it's a $200,000 annual opportunity versus $20,000 opportunity. And so there's ways and common mistakes that companies make with that as well. And so these are all the areas that I get laser focused on. And if we're looking at the AI, what I would say the number one thing right now is it's so new for companies implementing this at scale to their team that it's it's most organizations, what I would say is don't have a design plan or approach to it because this is happening so fast. And so that's yeah. one of the things that I bring to the table is I've spent, I don't know, thousands of hours in these large language models, understanding how they work, how to interact with them and, and how to leverage them. And so basically combine my domain expertise with that, bring that to the table so they can start implementing that and have a, have a superhuman revenue team. That's really what I focus on. Mm. What advice would you give someone that is looking to grow their sales in their company? Some guidance that you could provide either using chat GPT or any other advice that you could share that could help someone? Yeah. So it's a great question. And so I think if you're looking for growth, there's a couple, there's a couple levels, right? There's folks mm. that let's say you're not using this at all. There's that level. Most mm. people are like, where do I get started? Right? That's mm. those kind of like, how do I get started? How do I use this? And so what I recommend for that is like effectively start at its simplest level. Like one of the things that got me on track since 2016, I got really off the track in terms of my health. It wasn't like ridiculous, mm. but so one of the recommendations, I went to a personal development event and they're like, just do 10 minutes a day for daily for five days. Just do 10 minutes a day. That's all you need to do. Just walk on the treadmill for 10 minutes a day. So I look at that same thing is just do ten, start with 10 minutes a day, right? Mm -hmm. Something that you would use Google for, try ChatGPT for instead. At its basic level, just try that, ask that questions and be curious and look at the results and see where there's opportunity. The other thing I would say is also look at, like I put so much content on how to leverage this, how to do this very simply. And basically there's people like me where you can leverage all these areas so that you could take massive jumps. That's also why I created a sales AI accelerator to teach people how to do this, give them a prompt library and get a running start. So I have a membership model for that. For folks that are more advanced, what I would say is, or not more advanced, but started using it, but haven't quite seen the results that they want is there's a couple ways you could look at it. You, if you haven't gotten the results, it's either one of two reasons. One, you don't know what to focus on. Or two, you don't know how to get good quality out of the AI. And so like when it comes to don't know what to focus on, you could look at what's taking the most time from you on a weekly basis. You know, If you look at selling effectively 65% of time spent from sales professionals and sales executives is on non-selling activities? And is there a piece of that that you could carve out just from mm -hmm. one use case? At mm -hmm. the same time, if you're not getting the quality from the prompts or the results, I think 
like you said, there's so much content out there. Just make it a priority. Like just make it a priority. Look at a couple pre-built prompts that work, try them out for what you do, and then iterate on top of them. And then that's nice. like how you get the snowball moving. And, and like I said, I have tons of free resources for people. If they try my accelerator, I give them nine free AI resources that they could try that basically will level them up like instantly. For in sales, that's awesome. Thank you so much for that answer and that explanation. Can you speak a little bit more about this membership? Because it sounds intriguing. I know there's so much out there. There's so much noise, right? Especially around AI on YouTube. If you try to search something, some people feel overwhelmed with the amount of information. And then also they don't want information that is basically piggybacked on someone else's information and re-engineer, redesign. I'm sure people in the audience would like to hear more about this membership, how it can help grow sales. Yeah. So here, here's what I would say is like, and I'll tell you what I am, who I'm for and who I'm not for, right? Mm -hmm. Who I'm for and what I'm yes, doing good. Focused on is specifically for business people, right? Like business mm -hmm. to business, good. sales people, business to business, revenue focused founders, entrepreneurs, those people, not business to consumer, right? It's not focused on mm -hmm. that. And then it's not, I'm not like a marketing bro who's just make a million dollars in one week. <laughs> I got right? it. Like this, this, there's enough of those out there. That's not me. That's like, the noise. Yeah, that's the noise. And so yeah, yeah. if you're looking for someone or help on how to do it in a business to business space, that's me. I'm, I'm not someone who's in affiliate marketing or anything like that. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but so that's who I am and who I'm for. How this kind of works is super simple, man. I made it like very economical because I think, like I said, the let me put it this way. The why behind it is the biggest pressure I've ever seen or felt in my life is when I've had income uncertainty. Like I, I didn't know what was going to happen next. I've gotten fired a few times. Every time I've gotten fired, I've had my biggest like biggest peaks shortly thereafter, like the stock market, right? But it sucks when you're in that situation, you get fired or you don't know about your future and you have a family to take care of or, or you have yourself to take care of or you have debt or whatever it is. So why I created this, it's $97 a month. And effectively, I have a success path that you could walk through. I'm going to offer certifications for it too. So people get certified on this. And basically within two hours of taking this, there's two hours of content in that specific piece. Basically, you will be ahead of 99% of other people in your space, mm. specifically in the sales or revenue space, right? Take that, mm -hmm. it's two hours, and then you have a prompt library of all these different prompts. You'll be able to enable them for you. And then what I do is every month, it's a membership model. So I have effectively master classes, updates to it because this stuff is constantly changing with new prompts, new AI models and tools that you could use. And then at the same time, we started to branch that out in the community school. We could all start working together and then innovate on top of each other and really help each other. So that's all it is, man. Super simple, super mm, easy. Cool. And then when I work with companies privately, that's more about deploying it in teams, right? So how do I deploy this for a 50 salesperson revenue org or a hundred percent revenue org? And that's what I'm starting to get approached about all the time now because companies same are system, starting, same mm. concepts, just with more customization Incomes. and then obviously Got it. higher. Much higher cool. cost for that. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, that's awesome, my friend. Where can they find this exactly? Yeah, if it's cool, man, I can give a link and we could share it in the show notes. People could check it out. Sure, and, sure. Uh, just email. If you could just email me and I'll add it in yeah, the show we'll notes. Yeah, we'll pop it in there. What I would say is very simply too, if, if you don't see the link, follow me on LinkedIn and it's in my profile as well. You can check it out there. And Perfect, easy that's access. easier. It was, it was great talking to you, my friend, and I'm happy to see the success and growth you've experienced and how you're helping others. Thank you for giving your time to us and sharing what you've learned. Appreciate you. Yeah, thanks, Shahid. Thanks for having me on, man. Appreciate you sharing me with your, your folks, and I my really pleasure. appreciate the opportunity. My pleasure. Thank you. See ya.